But no, I have made complaints about the treatment from Senator McCain. Okay. But, 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 Is in this situation. But, but that's a, 
it is now because when they had it started, they had nine governors and former governors, four senators and former senators, they had the foremost pediatric neurosurgeon, they had a Fortune 500 CEO, a, 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 a woman. And the, 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 the people the people that comprised the Republican Party were very definitive. Yes, we have spoken, yes. So it is an arrogant position of theirs to say the will of the people will be dismissed because they don't know what they're doing within their own party, within their own primary. And, um, you know, it, it, what I want to tell them is, no, yeah, it's the people, stupid. As right. you would, probably would have come from the same. But, uh, no, to dismiss the will of the people, uh, again, I think really is um, telling of, of what this game well, is. Well, I don't want to say the names, but these are some initials, okay? <laughs> Carl Rove, Mitt Romney, Mitch McConnell, all right, people like that. Do you think that people like that respect the rank and file Republican vote? No. And by the way, some of those that you just mentioned, some of those initials, um, I consider them, with all due respect, uh, the term I use are loser consultants. And I say that because they keep losing election after election after election. And and yet they're still listened to by uh, others in the establishment and they're still hired, they're paid, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, some of them, through uh, different means in order to consult with campaigns that they keep losing. So, uh, no, I, I, I think they're very dismissive of um, just the, the rank and file, the essential people out there building this country and having their voice heard at a primary election. So, so we're sitting in a thing in, in, in where the people that ostensibly or traditionally have run the Republican Party or at long ahead with the people that actually vote in the Republican Party. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how do you how do you see this getting reconciled? I mean what what, what, what how do you see this play? I'm, I'm not going to worry about too much of the reconciliation because there are more of us than there are of them. And, you know, there's power and there's strength in the, in the number of people who um, have had their voice heard in the primary and, as you say, have been very definitive. Now, I have lived this in my own political career over a couple of decades now, starting out on local city council races and then running for mayor against a city Republican, then running for governor and winning against a city Republican governor. Um, I, I've always had to kind of bump my party when I have felt that they, being part of the establishment up there in Alaska, have not um, been fighting for the right things and have not been on the side of the people trying to get government back on our side. So um, I've lived it. I, I know how it works. And, um, you know, it, it, you, you just want to believe that uh, it is going to be the will of the people that will prevail. It's, a, it's, a, it's very influential. A lot of people that you endorse do very well in Republican primaries. Going forward, will this be a, a, a kind of determinative of your endorsement that if somebody did not come out and support the nominee, the presidential nominee in 2015, that you would be reluctant to support them in the Republican primary? I think endorsements, I, I think a whole lot of people don't give a flying flip about an endorsement, especially mine. I mean, we're politically irrelevant, really. If you, consider it has been but you're not, you're not no, politically relevant in a Republican primary. You have a very good record of endorsing in the primary. It's just common sense being plugged in to find somebody who's going to uh, basically as simply as be honest and, and a candidate who you can trust will campaign one way and govern that same way as opposed to what we see well, today in politics as usual. I, no one is in touch, I don't think, and I mean this honesty, no one is in better touch with the Republican base than you are. What drove them to reject establishment candidate after establishment candidate? What was driving this thing that said, no Jeb Bush, no Rubio, no Christie, no Scott Walker, no everything? What, what, what was driving? What, what, Take us and let and explain to us what, what, what drove this. How, how did a, a predictable, stable political party end up here? What, what caused this? Enough voters finally said enough of the betrayal. We really felt that we were getting screwed by the establishment. We could see the crony capitalists that they were allowing to drive the, the agenda for the nation and to um, actually um, uh, kind of lay out the political landscape for the nation. And that was um, 
to the detriment of the people, the essential Americans, again, building this nation, and we said enough. So it was all about that betrayal. And finally, people waking up and realizing that we are at a precipice, you know, that, because the trajectory that we're on it is, is not upward. It, it is downward, unfortunately. But people believing, too, it's not too late. We're going to turn this around. And we can't turn it around with people who have caused the problems. And then BS us, saying they have the answers all of a sudden. They have the solutions to the problems they just caused. Well, where were they? So no, enough people woke up and said no. And, and that's the Trump movement. That, that's why he's had the support. Okay, so you, you were a very early Trump supporter. Uh-huh. Because I, I, I met mean, all the I, other I, guys. I, 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 honestly, I mean, I'm very, what is it that you saw in Trump that, that you did this? Because it wasn't the, the sort of, when you did it, it wasn't like he had already won or people weren't predicting it wouldn't do. What brought you to endorse Donald Trump? What did you see? Give, give us a sense of that. Uh, a true record of success in the private sector. I um, mean, actually created jobs. Uh, you know, the politicians, they don't add value to the opportunities that we see in America. They, they don't actually create jobs. Um, and it, that's what the people are looking for. They're looking for opportunity to work, to have good jobs for their families. Um, so that, and just knowing that he was going rogue, you know, that he would uh, not be cuffed to the politically correct police and he would speak very candidly. It, it was funny, early on, James, I would hear people, uh, everywhere I traveled, they they kind of whisper, hey, uh, what do you think of Trump? And I'd say something positive about Trump and they'd keep on whispering. They'd say, yeah, you know, so do I. I, I like what he's saying. He's saying a lot of things that I'm thinking and nobody else is saying this stuff. And then it seemed like that whisper, though, got louder and louder and louder. And um, maybe my endorsement was able to kind of kick off, uh, logistically, I was speaking about uh, the timing of everything, kick off and maybe an empowering movement for other conservatives, other, you know, proud clingers to their guns or God and our Constitution and me, the Tea Partiers, to, to empower them, allow them to go ahead and support the guy, if, if you think, even though it's, it's, you know, kind of this avant-garde type thing, go ahead and support him. So I think when I came out and then some other people, conservatives, started um, coming out and supporting him, you know, the ball was rolling, but didn't have any I, I'm intrigued, I think you're booking into the you know, going road. Right. And you strike me you know, from a distance as a, a person that somehow or another you feel like people have tried to feed you something in your life, all of your life, and that you want to do things a certain way, and the idea of doing it their way just ultimately irritates the dickens out of you. Is that, is that, tell us the, the way that Sarah Pendle yes. looks at the world and looks at, looks at politics and people. Well, not in the real world, in my home life, and in my childhood growing up was I, a, you know, a stinker like I guess people think I am now in politics. It's been in my political life, in my political career over these couple of decades, James, that I realize the games that are played in politics, and I don't have time for the games. I realize that time is you all, your most valuable resource, and, and, and it's precious. I don't want to waste time, and I don't like seeing people um, get buffaloed, and, um, you know, I, so, yeah, in my political life, when people feed me bull, you know, I'll reject it, and, uh, I'm, I got nothing to lose, so I'll, I'll let other people know what's going on, and uh, I do think it empowers them. Now, so everybody got a huge crowd here. People, you know, in, in, most of the people here really like politics. A lot of people have followed you, probably a lot of, you know, my guess is maybe a lot of them didn't vote for you, but what is it about, what is something about Sarah Palin that do you feel like people don't know that you would like them to know about yourself? What, what, is, what is something they did? You know, we all have this, every, Sarah Palin is like plastered in our minds. And we all have five opinions about who Sarah Palin is, what she's like, what she thinks. And what are we missing about Sarah Palin, the person, the politician? You know, I, I, I wish that people would understand and could even appreciate the diverse background that I come from and that I'm a part of, um, including a, a very diverse family and, uh, you know, not everybody's hardcore Republican right wingers. Uh, we just, you know, have a lot of common sense and we want some self-determination and we want government 
off her back and on her side. And it's like I said in, in a speech that I gave earlier today, I said, like my dad's bumper sticker, it says, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm an American, and I want my country back. And I'm like, man, that, that's, that's who my people are. You know, just hardworking, patriotic Americans who, who want the best for our families and our businesses instead of a perception of being, um, uh, you know, intolerant and, um, uh, you know, uh, p perhaps I don't even have friends who have differing opinions. Oh my gosh, if people knew who I really hung around in my real life. So when, they you, say, when you say we want to take our country back, what is it that you want to take back? What, what I, is want it to, I want to take back no. the interpretation of our Constitution that is being wrongly interpreted today. But, 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 but you have, a, or you had, a majority of the Supreme exactly. Court. Exactly. That's right. why those guys in like, what, what, got to go. What, yes. what are you, I mean, but, we but, did. but you say, what, what, where are we going haywire on the Constitution? What are we doing <laughs> that, in your mind, All right. is... Take, take one, one issue. Take one of our amendments. Second Amendment. Okay. It, it's black and white. It's black and white okay. that we have the right course to bear arms. People who can interpret that to, um, oh, well, that means, um, well, uh, not everybody has that right, or, um, well, there are certain things like, oh, take like um, some ammo. Uh, th that doesn't apply. You know, we can get rid of that. We can get rid of, say, um, AR-15s uh, because they, you know, AR-15s weren't invented for hunting. And I say, yeah, and the Second Amendment wasn't written in case the moose turn on us. Of course it wasn't written for hunting. But do I have, do I have a right to possess a bazooka? Do I, do I have a right to possess a fatty aircraft? Do I can, can I have a service to air missile and, and live close to the Los Angeles airport? Well, that's just a stupid question. Well, no, it's not. It, it is. It's all. A okay. missile, yeah. So, <clears throat> so I, 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 mean, I, I was in the Marine Corps. I have guns. Yes. I grew up rural. Why do I need a 40 clip magazine? What, 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 what is it that, that I, what, what legitimate person, purpose? I understand, I have, I have a, a, a 38. I have a 22 long rifle. I, I used to be, my eyes are not what they used to be. I used to be a, a, a decent shot. But what is it? Why do I need that? I mean, and I'm, I'm not, I'm really, that's not, it's not a harassing question. Yeah. It's something that people don't understand. Yeah. And, and try to, from, from the perspective of, of your perspective and people of both of you, right. what, what are you saying? Well, uh, I hear what you're saying is there are some firearms that I, you think, should be outlawed, assuming, and it's a wrong assumption, that the bad guys are gonna follow any law and not have that firearm. And... I, I, right, I, 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 what I'm just asking the, the question, why do I need a 40 clip magazine rapid fire rifle? You probably don't live in there in New Orleans, uh, down in, uh, you, you know. Where would I live and need one? <laughs> if, I, if I move, I, I'm, not, I'm not, and this is not, I, I, it's not a, I'm not doing gotcha, but I think that people say, look, in, in actually, in, in the Shenandoah Valley, and people, real hunters, they don't even hunt deer anymore with, with repeating rifles. The Second they use Amendment bows. has nothing to do with hunting, though. Okay. It really but, but, doesn't. But it, but it has. It, it, it has but, to but, do but, with the constitutional right to protect yourself. Why do I, why do I have, yourself. why, constitutionally, what's the constitutional right to own, and, and by the way, I don't, have, I don't have a constitutional right to, to have a machine gun. Of, uh, you can convert an AK-15 to a machine gun, but you actually have to pull the trigger 40 times. Why, why can't I buy a, a, an M60 machine gun? Of which no, nothing. And, and you're Where saying because they're already outlawed, right? You're, you're saying that, that they're already But, but if the Second but, Amendment is absolute, why do you say I have a constitutional right to AR-15 that's not 
an automatic weapon. That's and a semi-automatic weapon. Why don't I have the equal constitutional right to, to an automatic? Okay. Where I just go pull a trigger once and, and, and kill 40 people as opposed to going to trouble and having to pull it 40 times. You can dirt my finger. Like a criminal would choose to do to be able to harm more people, correct? Again, the assumption if we were to pay, if we were to have more gun laws on the books, look at Chicago and all the gun laws that they have on the books. The, okay. when we, I, I, no, we, we have taken the guns. Right. If, if we, again, it is the assumption that more laws on the books are going to wake up and convert a criminal, a bad guy, to all of a sudden say, oh, there's a piece of paper that says I can't do that, I won't do that anymore. That's not going to happen. Know, I, I'm going to get off of this because it's going in a different direction, but, but people are going to get drunk and drive, but we have drunk driving laws. I mean, uh, people are going to, they're, they're going to, they're going to cheat on their taxes. If we have a law saying you can't cheat on your taxes, some people are going to cheat on their taxes anyway. We're going to always have bad people. Let me go. Well, and this, I, is, this I, is one I, of those issues, though, that I, you're not going to change my mind. I'm I not going to change my mind because not, if the Second Amendment right. goes, if, if that right goes, right. then every right, right. goes. I, I'm not trying. I want to be clear. I want to move on. I am not trying to change your mind. I'm trying to understand your mind. That, it's a difference. Okay? I'm, I'm, I, I know it, we're not going to. But I want to, I, I want to, I, I want to move on because I, I don't want it to, I don't want to get into a typical cable TV thing here. I want to know more about Sarah Palin, the person. I mean, you are the vice presidential nominee. You're a, a, a person of, of influence. I, I kind of admire, you, you, have, you know, real talent the way you speak and do things, and you know, trying. So, so we go back to the Constitution. You think the courts are misinterpreting the Second Amendment. What else, what other, what about the Constitution that we're missing here that you feel like we're losing or being taken away from us? Yeah, well, we know that the Constitution lays out for our federal government <clears throat> limits. And uh, there is a very general misinterpretation of what the limits of what the federal government should be doing. Uh, one thing the federal government should be doing that it's not is enforcing the laws that are on the books today, say, with um, immigration. Uh, illegal immigration, I mean, it's called illegal for a reason. And when we have a federal government that refuses to um, uh, enact the laws, to administer the laws when it comes to uh, making sure that uh, people are held accountable for breaking the law, the first thing that they're doing on our soil is breaking the law. Um, to me, it, it is, on the politician's part, a false interpretation of what the Constitution has laid out for our federal government to do. So, do you support the wall? Yes, yes. Just like um, uh, Hillary Clinton had supported the wall before she was against if, the wall. If, if, in and, fact, uh, if in fact, many politicians, yes. If in fact more illegal Mexican immigrants are leaving the United States in any given year than are coming in, why would we build a wall? Its effect would be to stop people from leaving. doesn't even make sense. That doesn't right. even make sense because you know the answer why it is that we would build a wall. Right. Obviously, because what's what we have to prevent illegals coming but over. But 